I'm Lori Chase, and I'm here interviewing Dr. Edward King, a.k.a. Ted. Good morning. Good morning. Ted, could you briefly describe your brain injury, your life before your brain injury, beginning with your employment? Beginning with what? Your employment. Okay. I'm an orthopedic and hand surgeon and worked, worked and co-founded Access Sports Medicine and Orthopedics in Exeter, New Hampshire. And I was worked full time, or over more than full time, probably sixty to a hundred hours a week, doing that, seeing patients in the office and taking call in the emergency room. And I was uh, sort of at the top of my game, to use a cliched phrase. But in a, in a pink of health, I ran three miles, about five days a week, and took an aspirin a day. However, on the night of March twenty second, two thousand and three. I had gone to the emergency room as usual, Saturday night special, a uh, person with a swollen knee that they asked me to come in for, which I did, and about 8.30 at night, and then returned about 11.30 at night and went to bed per usual. And the following morning was the morning of March 23rd then. I woke up and uh, the alarm clock was going off, but I couldn't uh, shut it off. But nothing was going off in a, as an alarm in my head that I couldn't move my left arm. But suffice to say, I couldn't. My wife finally figured out something was wrong, and she ran down and got my sister and brother-in-law, who were sleeping in a guest room downstairs. And he is uh, board certified in neurology as well as psychiatry, and he suggested uh, calling 911 because he tested my grip and noticed it was extremely weak. So the Brentwood ambulance showed up and took me to Exeter Hospital in the ambulance. And uh, the neurologist met me at the door there and followed me into the CAT scanner where they did a CT angiogram of my, the vessels in my brain and determined that this I was having an ischemic stroke, which was, meant it was due to a blood clot. And very promptly thereafter, he recommended and administered a, a clot buster therapy intravenously, which is known as TPA. And within five minutes of that injection, I was began to be able to move my left side, my left hand and left leg. So it was clear to me that this was working very quickly. And I was therefore exceedingly grateful to this neurologist, Kent Logan. And since then, my life has been one of uh, recovery therapy, constant therapy and constant uh, measures to improve my health and to re uh, Re, re, remake my life from scratch, more or less. There, is that adequate? What was your social life like? Uh, my social life was uh, reasonably busy. We'd, uh, I'd go once a month into Boston to, a, I have belonged to a social club there, and would uh, have a fancy dinner and with friends and uh, was able to drive myself into the city and home late at night usually. And I belonged, uh, in the summertime we were extremely busy. We have a summer place up on an island in Booth Bay Harbor, which is a social whirl in the summertime. Parties nearly every other night and uh, gatherings with uh, people and fellow sailors. Do you like to sail? Uh, yes, that was one of my uh, skills in addition to uh, orthopedic and hand surgery. But I was, I'm an exceptionally uh, accomplished sailor. I've raced to Bermuda uh, 15 times, what's called the Newport to Bermuda race. And I was skipper twice, once on a 50-foot boat and once on a 76-foot catch. And so... Uh, and I was once uh, on a championship crew of Long Island Sound, the junior championship of Long Island Sound, which I was on a crew that won that. I went to the North American Junior Sailing Championships one time, which you didn't know that I, about me, but I was, we have placed fifth in the nation in North America. And so since then, I've kept busy with sailing or kept up my interest in sailing with the Bermuda race every year or every other year. And indeed, I taught it during college and medical school. Does your family sail with you? 
Does your family join you when you sail? Yes, they do. I've got a son. My older son is uh, very uh, much interested in sailing, and we I often hand the helm over to him of my little J-22 sailboat. We, this island in Maine is called Squirrel Island, and my sailboat is called the Flying Squirrel. And he uh, takes the helm and likes to sail it, day sailing, takes us out with him, and we'll race it. And my wife is a good luck charm when she comes with us. She hates to lose, so more often than not, we win when she's aboard. <laughs> so you would say your family life was good? Yes, I've been blessed with a wonderful uh, wife and two children who are loving and uh, respectful and have done some things in their own right, major accomplishments on their own. How are you emotionally? Emotionally, prior to this injury? Yes. I'd say I was uh, very stable and not want to uh, emotional uh, fits. In the operating room, things can be very stressful and go wrong occasionally. But I did not, I was not one of those surgeons who throw instruments around the room or swear. But I usually kept my tongue and was uh, cracking jokes with the best of them. So I think like to think that the nurses like to work with me in my cases. I was a fun guy to be with. Don't want to build myself up too much, but I think that's the way it was. Ted, can you describe your injury? Well, I've just described to you my stroke and how it occurred on the morning of March 23rd. But it left me uh, numb on the left side and paralyzed on the left side. But uh, my retained my speech and most of my reasoning stayed intact. And what happened that morning when you woke up? I couldn't move the left side. And I couldn't feel it either. I couldn't feel my left side as if the line drawn down the midline. Anything to the left of the midline I couldn't feel. And I realized since then that I lost taste on the left side of my mouth. Did you understand what was happening to you at the time? Well, it slowly dawned on me that I was having a stroke. And I knew about stroke, of course, from medical school and from treating patients occasionally with uh, who had had stroke and orthopedics. But in my uh, short sighted view of things, I thought, it was like you, I likened it to something like a mild sprained ankle that I'd be all fine in about 10 days. But how far from the truth that was. What was the extent of your rehabilitation? Oh, well. After Exeter Hospital, I was shipped to Leahy Clinic for early, uh, early rehab and reduced the swelling in my head. And that's where I did the first walking. And uh, with the aid of, help of an aide who'd uh, not quite carry me to the uh, bathroom, but uh, I would navigate on my own with my arm around his shoulder and his arm around under my sh arms. And he had a funny phrase. He'd say, I so happy, you're going to do well. I so happy. Hmm. So I took encouragement from his, uh, his uh, cheer. And from Leahy, I was, uh, went to Health South Rehab Hospital in Concord. And there I began intensive physical and occupational therapy and a little bit of speech therapy where they had me do uh, some uh, logic puzzles, which I was not very good at, but would get annoyed with, annoyed with a speech therapist for administering them to me. But I persevered with that and also uh, did progressively began walking and doing stairs. And their therapist said, pointed out to me that the first time up the stairs he had to carry me, but the by the end of my stay, which was about three weeks, I was doing stairs quite well with a cane. Next, I went from uh, Health South Rehab to home. And my wife became then a full-time caregiver by default. 
with some help from my kids, and uh, therefore it drove me everywhere. And I went, was enrolled in uh, Portsmouth Neuro Day Rehab in Newington, where I received daily PT, OT, speech nearly every day, as well as uh, neuropsych uh, evaluation and uh, testing and encouragement, I would say. And that's where I met you, Lori. Did you realize any the deficits that you had at the time, or did they have to specifically point them out to you? Well, it's not a... It's not something that they uh, spell out in exact detail to me, the patient, I slowly realized that I had a great problem with left-sided neglect, and I had some problems with uh, impulsivity and uh, speaking up. I would speak out of turn more often than not, but at least I could speak and make sense, I thought, most of the time. And I thought usually I had something to contribute. But I would, if I ran over something with my wheelchair, it was on the left side, because I wouldn't notice it, and would hit things on the left side of the wheelchair. And whenever I don't notice something, it's always on the left side. For example, one time I was taking notes, I was speaking with my attorney, and I took notes, and after I'd finished the one-hour conversation, I noticed that I'd just written on the right side of the page, putting nothing on the left side of the page. It was an odd thing to discover. And in reading, I would sometimes have trouble noticing the left side of the page. I would have trouble finding my place where I had left off reading. And it was, more often than not, it would be on the left side of the page. How did this make you feel? Oh, I thought it was a... Uh, deficit that I could, um, with strategies, I could overcome that without much trouble. And there's nothing that I encountered that I did not feel I would be able to uh, overcome with some practice and determination and more therapy. One thing I speech therapist did, one positive thing about speech therapy is I couldn't wink with my left eye. And so the therapist uh, took to uh, giving me e-stim on my left uh, cheek and around my eye. And eventually, after several weeks of getting that e-stim, I was able to wink. As I can show you here, Andy. So that's one good thing. Another good thing about speech therapy. Did you ever have the ice treatments on your face, too? How did you like that? Uh, no, I couldn't stand the ice treatments. The better thing that she taught me was uh, to do the uh, crypto clips in a paper, which is a letter substitution puzzle. Every, every Manchester Union leader on the next to last page. And I finally got to be really good at that and could do them in 10 minutes. Now, pretty much, it's about a 10-minute task to do those. So I'm impressing my family with how well I do those. Ted, how has your life been affected since your injury with your family? Well, the family has uh, leaped in, leapt in, and uh, with uh, great support driving me and uh, helping me with uh, food. Always, I can't cut my own food, for example, and they always cut my food for me. And they're very tolerant of me, of my peccadillos. My father, who's 92, likes to drive me around and encourage me, wonders why I'm not back at work yet. That's one thing that's certainly changed, is I haven't been on call in the emergency room or even been to work, really, since the time of my injury. And that was a emotionally a difficult pill to swallow, was that I could not work anymore, or at least in the near future. And with uh, great encouragement and support, I've eventually uh, wound up doing some visiting and lecturing in my specialty of hand and upper extremity uh, maladies to uh, both BU and UNH at the Schools of Occupational Therapy. 
that did wonders for my self-esteem. And I think I was able to pass on a little bit of my 25 years of accumulated knowledge gained in practice, which makes me feel good about myself. How has your social life been affected since your injury? Uh, well, I still enjoy going to uh, Maine in the summertime, and uh, we I don't think we get invited to as many uh, functions as we did, but people are still kind to me and invite us to uh, graduation parties and that sort of thing. And uh, we're brought along to a brunch of the month club, and that's a fun thing to look forward to. The BBC, the Brentwood Brunch of the Month Club. But it's uh, less... Uh, Less social, not totally isolating, but it is tends to be isolating. I can't participate in sports the way I used to. Like tennis, I used to play tennis quite a lot, often as a social uh, endeavor, and I can't do that. Or I haven't really tried to, except one time. So I'm limited because of my physical limitations in things that would normally be social that I would do, some swimming activities and some things like tennis or hiking, except for the aid of a uh, cane or a ski pole, I have some limitations in navigating around and uneven surfaces, but I make do and don't give in to this. That's my stomach. I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have financial burdens since you're not able to work? Well, there are some um, good things I did in the past. Is One is to uh, buy disability insurance. So it took five months for that to become effective. But the upshot is that every month I get a nice uh, fat check from the disability insurance company. As long as I cannot do my original occupation, hand and orthopedic surgery. And the uh, Social Security, the government actually comes through once in a while. Trust me, I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. And so after five months, I started getting Social Security disability income. So once a month, I get a nice uh, check from them. So financially, I'm intact. And that was a big relief to meet with a financial advisor who helped uh, detail our uh, uh, budget income and outgo and uh, pointed out that I'm okay until I'm 85, more or less. But my wife is uh, quite worried, more than I am. But I feel I could go back to consultation in orthopedics if I went into it slowly. and could therefore, if I had to, could get back to work. Can you tell me how about your beliefs? Have they changed since your injury? That's a good question. I've become much more spiritually oriented and uh, become much more spiritual than I was pre-injury. And a strong belief now that uh, the Holy Spirit is helping me through this all and uh, I'm convinced that I have a guardian angel who has saved me from uh, many uh, calamities all through my life really and uh, Psalm 34 verse 7 Mandy and Naomi the Lord sends his angel to guard those who fear him so that angel is my guardian angel I didn't die a couple times with my stroke at the early stages and I've been able to get out uh, through the good graces of stepping stones and other uh, well-meaning uh, people to get back a, a life. Now, did you have another support system besides your family? Well, I joined a men's Bible study group that meets uh, weekly all year. And that was has been very good for me. 
and and they've given me the feedback that I'm good for them. It's it's twelve pilots and me, so we're all starting our lives over in many ways, or about to start our lives over. Pilots don't have a great deal of job security, and uh, plus I've learned a great deal of scripture and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which are these uh, Bible phrases that have become uh, much more uh, familiar and comforting to me. Like Romans 8, 28, all things happen for good for those who love God. Trust or, or Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and soul, and lean not on your own understanding, and he will make your path straight. Maybe I'll be an inspirational speaker. Ted, how do you feel emotionally now? Uh, I'd say overall it's uh, very good that I feel I've got a loving family and that I've made it through the worst of this thing and uh, can see light at the end of the tunnel. And I had found a therapist who have been able to deal with my worst problems. For example, the pain which I had, which is called uh, post-stroke syndrome pain or central pain syndrome pain, Again, my uh, neurologist saved my life because I was suicidal for a while. And uh, I, then I learned about acupuncture, and that acupuncturist really saved my life because it took away, she took away all the pain briefly. And I've also met through, uh, actually indirectly through this men's Bible study, of a uh, wonderful uh, craniosacral therapist. And with her help, I've been able to keep the pain at bay and with the acupuncturist and the neurologist. What is the biggest thing that has changed for you since your injury? The thing I miss the most, Lori, is uh, the inability to run. I used to get a great endorphin rush running three miles five times a week. But not being able to do that has been a great uh, loss. It's like losing a friend. So I work towards that, and I take a long walk, a mile and a half walk every day. Walk through my garden and around my pond and through the woods and then around through the neighborhood. But if I could run, that would um, be the uh, best outcome for me. Do you think you will run again? Yes, I think that is in the cards. At some point, I'll be running again. I'll come in and run for you and play the piano. You should play the entertainer by rote. Now it's a little, you would never recognize it. Now, what have been your biggest communication challenges? Well, I spent a great deal of time thinking about what I'm going to say and trying to phrase or phrase and rephrase my thoughts so that they will have some impact to the, my audience. receiving speech therapy, what was that like for you? Well, mostly it was good because I had a good uh, rapport with a speech therapist. And on occasion she'd get on my nerves with that ice therapy and with some of these logic puzzles that she would uh, present to me and I would um, almost, she almost reduced me to tears when I couldn't do them sometimes. For example, if 
Bill has three trees, and John has one pear tree. How many children does Mary have? That kind of question. She would delight in giving me those questions, and I had no clue even how to figure them out. But I once did all that, easily that type of thing in my head. But now I have trouble getting uh, two levels of understanding in my head, keeping that straight. Did you ever feel like you've been reduced to a child with, by these therapists? Well, it's uh, yeah, a lot of this is infantilization. Um, you know, my wife wants to know if I've gone to the toilet yet today or go to the toilet before I go to bed, that type of thing. And it's instant aging, instant uh, senility. So I used to fall, not infrequently, about once a week would fall and feel like a 96-year-old man but or a two-year-old child. So it's a combination of infantilization and uh, aging. And with both those experiences, you have to learn to uh, work through them. Like as a child relearns from each fall a little bit more about having to stay up, having to manipulate food on his plate, and I, part of the problem of not feeling things on the left side is I often food will be on the left side of my face, which is would be embarrassing, except I can't see it myself, but my family always calls attention to it, that there's enough food on my face to feed an army of ten. Now, how old are you now, Ted? I'm just 59 years old. How old do you feel you are? That's uh, take some thinking, but uh, I feel somewhere between 85 and 100. What are some of the goals that you have set for yourself at this point in your life? Well, I'd like to uh, uh, set up more of a... Uh, uh, rapport with the uh, OT interns and the classes of OT to be able to share more of my knowledge of hand and upper extremity problems with them and make them more comfortable with the hand and problems that can occur with the hand. So that's in a way of, I'd like to do more of giving back to the uh, community that I was really a member of, which is a medical medical community. What steps are you taking to achieve that, achieve them? Well, email. I've been emailing uh, different professors of OT here at uh, BU and at UNH, and I have some soft invitations to resume teaching again in the fall, both at BU and UNH. So I think that's going to come to, fru come to fruition. Another goal beyond uh, teaching more is uh, would be running, as I mentioned. What kind of barriers are you facing? Well, I have not been driving yet. I've not returned to driving, and that's a big uh, handicap because I can't leave the home very easily or go any distance in the car unless I can't go anywhere unless my wife drives me or one of my kids. And we live five miles out in the country, so it's a little long walk to do it on my own. Do you think you'll improve enough to drive again? Well, I had a, uh, a friend 
who's our family auto mechanic, took me on a therapeutic drive not too long ago, and I drove for about a half an hour successfully around a neighborhood and negotiated that without any dings or hits. So I felt very good about that. And so it made me think that driving is not out of the question at all. How has Stepping Stones made an impact on your life? Well, Stepping Stones has uh, been instrumental in uh, me reinventing myself as a visiting lecturer at, in the schools of occupational therapy. And without their introductions to these groups, I would not uh, have had the success that I have had. So it's been uh, instrumental in restoring my self-esteem. And I think I get along with most of the uh, fellow attendees and think they like me and I like them. And the interns are fun to work with. How long have you been a member of Stepping Stones, Ted? July, all oh, last fall, and uh, so three and seven is about ten months. That's great, Ted. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thanks for your interest.